Hey everybody, you have David Abrams here along with a good friend and colleague of mine, Joe Troyer. Most of you guys on this call might actually be coming from Joe, so you probably know him already or interact with him in some level, but if you don't, uh, definitely want to, to introduce you and make sure that you, you learn a lot from Joe today. Um, I'm really, I told him before the call, I'm honored to have him on here. I've been a part of his uh, SaaS mastermind group. I've known Joe for, for like four years now. We've done a product launch together. We've done a lot of things together, um, but I'm always just blown away by your genius, uh, bro. From from the marketing side to kind of your operational understanding, just business understanding. But really, I think where you really excel is like the marketing angles yeah. on things. Like you've done just an amazing job on that. So um, guys, if this is your first time here today, welcome to the Demio Discover call. We're going to be talking about the entrepreneurial journey that that kind of Joe went on, um, his his growth here into into business. Um, we'll talk about some of the marketing ideas that he had. He just finished a large promotion on a, a marketing mastermind group. So we can talk about some of those items, some of the things that he's used to propel himself into software. But most of all, guys, we just want to give you actionable content. So um, just go ahead and say hello, everybody. Joe, I'll let you say hello and introduce yourself. What's up, guys? Good to see you guys here. And I was looking at the attendees, David, and recognized lots and lots of names and faces and some people that I know that primarily follow you but are on our list too. So it's cool to see all of you guys here hanging out. And uh, like David said, you know, the goal of today is just to give back to you guys, to talk about the journey and to give you guys some real actionable insights and stuff that you guys can use to go and grow your business. So help us make the most of today's call, right? Uh, on my webinars, my webinars uh, are always very different from everybody's. Um, and that's because I command attention from the audience or I don't really give anything, right? Like if you're interactive with me, I'll over deliver and give you, right, everything. Uh, but if you don't, right, we might as well jump off the webinar. So let's make sure that we do that today and we deliver some awesome value for you guys. So be interactive with us. Definitely. A hundred percent, guys. So just say hello in the chat. Go ahead. Click on that chat icon on the top of the screen, guys. Give us hello. Say hi to Joe. Um, I want you guys also to kind of make sure you, as we kind of progress through this call, uh, to take a take a look at questions and stuff that pop up. But guys, we we feed off interactions. So we would love for you guys say hello. Make sure you're, you're typing in. Um, Rick, awesome. Glad to have you here. Charles, Doug, all of you guys. Keep typing in. Juanita, what's going on? I know you, Juanita. <laughs> hey, from Cape Town. Hey, Paul. What's going on, everybody? So again, guys, this is totally just your hour. This is really uh, our, our Demio Discover call, all value packed. Um, so make sure you're typing in, you're saying hello, and we will kind of just get started. It's 2.05. We like to just kind of get started right on the, right on the beginning of the hour. And uh, right before I got on this call, my dog decided to just jump right on my lap. I don't know if I can show her. <laughs> she's sitting there on my lap. So if she jumps in the screen, that's why I have a dog sitting on my lap. <laughs> but, awesome. uh, but hey, everybody. So let's, um, let's start here, Joe. I think, I think your story is really amazing. Kind of, I've heard your story with you and your co-founder, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of how you guys even got started in business and kind of built up the companies that you did. So maybe kind of give us a little background uh, about your journey. I just find that so interesting. That everyone's journey is so different. And yeah, yeah, at the sure. same time, so <laughs> for sure. Let me turn off my phone here. It's vibrating. Um, so the, uh, I think, you know, everybody's journey is unique. I think it's always interesting to hear people's journey. You know, uh, when I was very young, I was kind of a classic entrepreneur, you know, like the lemonade stand kid, you know, anything that I could do for a buck, essentially I would do. Um, growing up then getting into like my first jobs and things like that. I didn't care what I had to do. I didn't care, you know, if it was manual labor or whatever paid the most amount of money right at the end of the day is what got my attention. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I did some crazy stuff in the construction space um, growing up. You know, I, I was uh, laying block, pouring concrete. I even milked cows was my very first job. Um, so like whatever I could do to make the make a buck. So um, I think, you know, I've never been afraid of that. Um, and then I had kind of a life tragedy hit me. And this is ultimately what I believe turned me more into an entrepreneur. Uh, my father... Uh, my birth father uh, passed away and he passed away with nothing. Um, and so literally, um, you know, was at his funeral. He always worked his ass off. He was very similar to me in the mentality that he would do anything for a buck, but he never left a legacy. Right. 
Um, mm -hmm. he, it wasn't just about the money, but there was no legacy. It was over, right? He was gone. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that was sadness for me. It was, you know, very painful for me, uh, but ultimately made me realize that I'm never going to do that to my family. Uh, I, I want to leave a legacy past just me. Um, and you know, when I die and when I pass on, you know, the, there will be money left for my family to take care of themselves and to take care of my passing. Um, and it really woke me up. So, um, fast forward a couple of years and, um, uh, I was uh, going to college, I just started college, and uh, I hated it, absolutely hated college. Um, I'm very entrepreneurial, I'm very ADD. Uh, when I am going to learn, I'm going to learn, everything else gets cut out, right? Like I just put my head down and I learn. Uh, college sucked for me uh, because everybody was always distracted, asking the same questions like repeatedly, back to back to back because they weren't paying attention, and it drove me crazy drove me mad uh, so I sought out another way um, and I actually ended up dropping out of college and I went to do uh, courses online and so uh, I was learning about web development web design uh, because I didn't know where to get in in this space I knew that I wanted to do something online I knew that there was a lot of money to be made but I had no idea where uh, so put my head down ran through that um, and uh, just as I was approaching the end of it I started to question my time Right? Was the last year, was the last year and a half worth it? Right? Am I going to be able to do something with this? Uh, and I started to question myself. So I said, you know what? I'm going to take, take a break from working my day job and from going to school, and uh, I'm going to go see what I can do. So I uh, went out, sold a, uh, a $10,000 web design job, and went, okay, but I don't really know how to do this shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, okay, I can do it. I can pull it off, but okay. Uh, but what would be more interesting, and maybe this was just a fluke, let's see if I can do it again, right? So went and sold another and another and another. And within a period of about a week or two, I had you know six or seven jobs sitting in my lap, and I had no idea how I was going to get them all done. <laughs> that's awesome. That, that's the, what is the shoot, fire, aim yeah. approach? Yep. Build the parachute on the way down. Um, right. you know, we're, we're all about that. We got to see if it works, minimum effective dose, right? And if it works, we'll figure it out. And so... Um, so then I'm kind of freaking out. Uh, for about a week, I went head down, was working on all these projects, looked up about a week later, and you know I had one project done, but had no idea how I was going to get the others done in time. And so I started looking for help. I, who could help me knock these out? Who, who is around me that is smarter than me? And uh, I, uh, I, I guess you could say I growth hacked the business. I found the nice. other... I found the other main uh, web design, web development shop in the area or a company in the area. I built a relationship with the guy that ran the business. He didn't own the business. He was the operator of the business, though. Uh, and, you know, he was having some problems. He didn't see uh, a plan for growth. He didn't see opportunity in the future. And I took him. Um, and he came to work for me, quit his job. Um, I gave him a big fat, you know, raise and, uh, and some skin in the game, right? Uh, because he was nervous, right? I was brand new. It was a brand new business, but he saw what I just did. So I incentivized it for him. I made it worthwhile for him. He left his company and the rest is kind of history. Um, you know, the, the funny thing is, is that people would contact him, uh, on his cell phone number to do work for the other company. So once he started coming and working for me, guess what? We basically had an open book of business, right? People are literally calling up his phone. Hey, you know, can you update my website? Yes, I can, but I need you to understand that I don't work for X, Y, and Z anymore. And I work for A, B, and C now. And here's the difference, you know, and we pitched them why it was better. That's awesome. So, um, so fast forward, that went really well, front page of the newspaper a couple times for different projects that we had done and um, got some media attention uh, when I was living in Ohio and, and, and we did really, really well. Um, but that was before the, uh, the economy crashed in the late 2000s, right? And um, at that time, I'm looking at ways to get out of just the web design and web development and more into the marketing side of things. And uh, I met my current business partner, uh, who, uh, Ben Pate, uh, who lives here in South Florida. And, uh, when the economy really started taking a crash in Ohio, I dipped out. Um, I told my family that I was going to go, you know, check out 
down here. I had been down here a couple of times, but I was going to go look for, you know, an apartment. I was going to sign a lease and, you know, probably over the next two or three months, I would be transitioning and moving. Um, I came down here. I was here for five days. I signed a lease, went back <laughs> home. And in a week I was moved in. Right. right. Like, <laughs> you know, when, when my mind's made up, I move very, very fast, very, very quickly. Um, and it's just that massive imperfect action. You know, you, ha you have to build the parachute on the way down, I think is probably one of the biggest tips that I could give for, for anybody. So, so, you, so that's kind of how you met Ben, your current business partner. That's how you got started. Yep. And it sounds like, quite honestly, um, and we were saying before, like each journey is so unique. Like it sounds like, you know, your motivation came from a, a lot of family stuff. And yep. um, I think that's, first of all, so powerful. I think legacy is everything. But um, yeah, your first step into services, which is kind of how everyone gets their toes yep. a little bit wet in the start. Then you met Ben. All right, so you meet Ben. How do you guys then transition from what you know into building now what is an amazing software company and service-based company? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, we, we kind of have multiple legs now. So we have a, a we still have our services company, um, and that's growing faster, honestly, than it ever has. Um, we have our software company, and then we have our training company. Um, and each of them by themselves are million-dollar businesses. Um, mm -hmm. and so the way that we transitioned was actually pretty simple. You know, we, we went head down and, and started picking up lots of clients for services and started building solutions internally for us because, uh, other solutions were too expensive or they didn't do what we needed it to do. And so mm -hmm. the first example of that is, uh, was our call tracking platform. So essentially, um, in, in the marketplace for call tracking, to be able to show customers what we did for them and to be able to prove an ROI for them, we used call tracking, right? So when their phone rings from our marketing efforts, we could show them, you know, here's what we did for you this month. Well, back then, uh, it was really, really expensive. Okay. And it still is if you don't look out for the right providers and if you don't know what you're looking for. So we were on track to spend six figures a year just on call tracking services. And finally, I'm like, dude, like this has to stop. Like we got to find our own service or we got to do something. And uh, one day I, uh, I happened upon Twilio. And uh, Twilio is now our back end and who we use to, to run our call tracking platform. Uh, so it's a developer's platform. They don't have any special front end. They're, you know, it's not user friendly. Got to have a developer build something. Yeah. 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 So uh, fast forward, you know, two, three weeks later, we built our own call tracking platform. We used it, eliminated this huge overhead for us. Um, and uh, for about a month and a half, a friend of mine that was in the software and training space, info product space was on me like every day. Dude, let me sell this to my customers. Let me sell this to my customers, please, please, please. And I just kept telling him no. And then he came back to me and was like, uh, one day he, he sent me a message and was like, I did a, I did a promotion yesterday or a webinar yesterday and uh, we made 30 grand on the webinar. And I'm like, all right, bro, let's give it a shot. <laughs> right? Like, okay, you twisted my arm. Let's, let's see if it's worth it. And uh, the rest is kind of history. Um, we both, I think, set a record for ourselves that I don't think we've beaten until now. Um, well, maybe, maybe close a couple times, maybe just over a couple times, but we did $80,000 live on GoToWebinar. Wow. Um, on a $200 product. That is, you think uh, about that, that is you know, 400 sales. We converted over 50% of the attendees. So um, the rest is kind of history, right? Uh, so we onboarded those customers and kind of kept going down the space. Um, analytic call tracking now since then has evolved to a, a, a huge, huge business. And since then we've released you know, other tools um, that, that all are derived and built from our own needs internally, right? So we fuel it, we build it for us, we use it, we tweak it for us, and then we put it out for the marketplace, right? And then we get their feedback and help tool it even further. Right. That's, um, <clears throat> that's often how some of the best products actually get made, right? It's like you're finding your own pain and you're building it yourself. And I think you've done a really amazing job of, um, I think two things, one, finding the right pain points to solve. You guys have built it out. You have, um, the ideas behind how to scale out and build the team around those products. But what I think you do really well, and you kind of just hit on with that promotion is you, understand the marketing angles to sell that software. Because a lot of times, if you just went out and told someone, hey, I have this analytic call tracking software, it does X, Y, and Z, and you like, get all technical and, yeah. and really you know, um, complicated with everything it can do, 
you're not making sales. So what you've been able to do, and I think I've, I've learned a lot from you, is understand the angles to take a, uh, you know, whether it's a service or a mastermind or a software, and you angle it around benefit or you angle it around how it can help the user. So I guess with analytic call tracking being one of the, I guess, hardest things you can imagine to sell from like a sexy angle kind of yeah. way. How do you guys, how did you kind of get through the process and figure this out on your first one? So yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, I think with whatever you sell, you have to have goals, number one, on what it's going to be. Is this a long-term play, you know, a primary tool that we're always going to sell? Or is this just, you know, like a lead gen tool for us internally, something we're just going to like undervalue and just give it to the marketplace and we want a thousand customers? Um, I think that's what you ultimately always have to decide first, right? Um, and I see way too many marketers in this space and in, in, in the entire web space as well, not defining that from the get-go, right? And so they, they do something and then they try to course correct and it just kind of catches on fire because they didn't have the right intentions from the get-go. So I think that's mm -hmm. the first thing is just what are the intentions? And then number two is, I mean, your USP and what you stand for has to make a splash, right? It has to be easy to understand by the customer why you're different than any than everybody else. And if it doesn't, uh, can it still work? Will you make some money? Yes, right? But it's not going to explode like you want it to. Hmm. So what we how did... Big you have to, how big would you say that differentiation needs to be? I, I think it needs like, to be big and it needs to be prominent, right? And, yeah. and you need to stake your whole claim around that. And if people land on your site and they can't figure that out in a couple of minutes, right? 60 yeah. seconds, they're gone, right? Because you're just another me too. So I think that's a really 60 seconds. Yeah, I like that. Right. So, um, you know, analytic call tracking for us, um, you know, the whole hook was easily host your own call tracking platform. And so it's white labeled, right? And it's theirs. And because of that, then it's wholesale pricing, right? So if you're a agency and you have some clients, you can white label it to you. That's great. But now you're also paying wholesale prices. Right? Mm -hmm. So the difference between wholesale and retail and call tracking is crazy. You can pay up to 8 to $12 for one tracking phone number and 8 to $0.12 cents a, a minute for tracking. Right? With Twilio, it's a dollar a phone number and a cent a minute. Right? So if you have more than one customer, you'd be an idiot not to use our service. Mm -hmm. right? And so like, we, we can make that claim very, very quickly and easily. Mm-hmm. Now, when you're looking for those products to build, I think this is a really cool, like a really cool kind of exercise. Is when you're coming up with those ideas, or you're looking at your marketing and your differentiation, um, you know, are you are you starting with that? Are you saying where's the angle that we can have, or do you find the problem first and then after you kind of like build out the the problem that you have and you're kind of like refining it? Are you saying okay, let's find the angle now, or are you doing that first to make sure that angle's there? You find that? I would say most of the time, probably nine out of ten uh, times, we have it figured out from the beginning. Why? Because mm -hmm. like guys, we're not in the day and age where we're all creating something brand new. Everything's basically been created already, right? It's 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 kind of like this app and kind of like that app, right? Is is what something ends up being. Right, but it's your unique angle. And so when you go to build something, it's the angle that you're taking with it. And so I think nine times out of 10, you have that unique selling proposition and that bold claim or promise and, and the reason behind your software from the get go. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I mean, it definitely makes sense to me. Guys, put in the chat, does that make sense? Because I think this is a really key concept. And I think for a lot of people, um, that are looking for either a product or service or they're even just improving their marketing and their business, one of the things that they continually, I often see is that they're either building the product or, or the service or something without knowing that marketing or without having that differentiation. And they're just building things that are just either, like you said, like a, like, uh, a me too kind of product yeah. or just people don't understand why they, why they should even invest more time, not even yep. more money, but just more time into learning about them. Yeah, and I'll give you guys an example maybe from, the, from a, a traditional more service-based business, right? So as an agency, we did AdWords for a long time. My business partner, Ben, was managing like a million dollars a month in ad spend for clients. We're doing SEO campaigns ranking you know, number one and number two for fat loss and watches, right? Like huge companies work, working with the BBC, some of the top 500 internet retailers out there, like huge e-com companies, uh, and then also working for mom and pop companies, right? Right? And at the end of the day, it was like, wh why do we have to keep repackaging everything that we're doing, right? And, and why is our pitch becoming more 
uh, ineffective. And it was because the marketplace is getting crowded, right? So what do you do to differentiate yourself? So, I mean, what we came up with was the paper call or the paper lead type of method, right? So why would you pay us to do SEO? Why would you pay us to do pay-per-click when we can cut right to the chase and I can give you exactly what you want for the price that you want, right? Who's not going to be interested in that versus let me sell you some social media or some SEO or some AdWords or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? That's, that's... Just a little bit of a different angle versus the, the software versus a service so you guys can understand you know, you need to be able to stick out quickly and not just be another me too. Mm -hmm. that, that's absolutely fantastic advice. And I think that's where most people struggle. And it's oftentimes, and I've said this on one of these calls before, is that, you know, sometimes the best product in the world can, um, can, can fail because they don't have a strong enough marketing angle. They don't have enough customer acquisition. And at the end of the day, they need those sales to keep, you know, churning and stuff like that. But the product itself is a very important part of everything you're doing, whether it's a service or, or fulfillment of the service yep. or the product. But those marketing angles itself have to be defined early. They have to be defined right. And customer validation is, is a very good way to do it. You can do that early on, um, but it's really, really powerful there. Um, so, so let's say, okay, so now you, you're kind of marketing some of these products. What would you say were some of like the big either roadblocks or, or, or big change that you found along the way that were really kind of important to the journey to kind of build to that million dollar um, a year kind of business structure because you guys started each one individually. Definitely. Um, I think that one of the big takeaways is that we continue and always will continue to serve, serve the same marketplace, mm -hmm. right? So I see a lot of like uh, software companies try to build an app, it fails, or build a piece of software, it fails. Then they build another one and it fails. Look, it's not going to be an overnight success. Right. But if mm -hmm. you if you serve the same marketplace and all the software and all the training and all the things that you do, all those things together can accumulate to success. Right. And so when we built analytic call tracking, we had to start from scratch. It was a long journey. Right. But mm -hmm. then when we built Sendwire, guess what? We have a built in user base of people that uh, that that it solves a major problem for them. Mm hmm. Right. So, so I think I think that that's super key too. you know, staying focused on the same tribe, the same customer base and continuing to help them solve their problems. Would you say a key word that we like to throw around at Demio is focus? Would you say it's just like being focused on your business and on your definitely, niche? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And being focused on your customers. I think a lot of us are too afraid to go too deep with our customer base. Right, that we're going to get too involved. That like all our time as as creators is going to get eaten up working one on one with people. And I think that it's a cop out. Right, um, it's taken me a long time to get to that. Right, but ninety percent of my day I spend one on one or one to many with my community, and not just surface level. Hey, how's it going? Let's jump on a quick, you know, uh, you know, Q and A webinar. Like going really, really deep in their business. That's amazing, and. Um, I do the same thing. We do like one-on-one -on -one demos here pretty much all day. So like uh, we have a very similar um, approach where it's it's learning about the market and trying to learn because the more conversations you have, I like got not only the better are you at sales and stuff like that, but you understand objections, you understand desires, needs, Definitely. you understand the languaging to those to that audience, and that's how you can really go deep. But you you have to sacrifice the time to do it. Like that that time. Um, it's true. You're sacrificing a lot of energy and momentum, but you know, you can strategically do it as well to really understand like this is business building, like understanding your customer is business building. It's not just yeah. being on calls all day. Yeah. But, but focus, you know, on another angle, uh, you know, focus is super key, right? Staying focused mm -hmm. on that customer base, right? Is key. You know, we, we got caught up in the whole software. Let's just build a bunch of stuff and stuff that we could use. And that was cool, but it served a different market. Okay, so now you're reinventing the wheel on who your customer base is, right? And can it be successful? Yes, but understand it's going to take a whole lot more work, a whole lot more effort for it to quote unquote be successful, right? Whether you look at that in terms of money that you're making or you're looking at, at, at that in terms of how many users you have, right? It's just going to take longer and it's going to be harder. You know, we built some brilliant stuff outside of the market that we currently serve, but guess what? We, we never did anything with it or it went away pretty quickly because we realized it was kind of a waste, right? That we'd be much better off serving the market that we primarily serve and doing a really good job of that and going super deep with them. Yeah. Now, I think what you guys have done really well is you've gone super deep. You started analytic call tracking. 
next software, next software, but you also then started cutting into services and then you went to the mastermind. So when you're going deep, I guess the question for you is like, when do you know it's time to sprout another um, direction to that same customer base? When is it too soon to jump into like services and masterminds and all these things versus you feel comfortable to get into those next areas and you like, you have your structured business there. I think that um, it comes back to like the same thing with like hiring people. When do you hire people? Right. And so for me, I'm a firm believer that unless you're looking for like a developer or a designer or something that's very, very um, uh, learned that you need to figure it out, you need to make it work. You need to come up with a process for it. Then and only then do you have somebody else do it. Right. So mm -hmm. for me, it's all about building the system, building the process for anything new that we do and then handing it off into onto my team members for them to run it so that I can go attack the next process. Right. The next opportunity, the next service. Does that make sense? That's really awesome. So, I mean, yeah, and, and anything that you do, you got to jump, you got to build the parachute. Right. Uh, you got to take that leap of faith and then you got to build the systems and processes on the way down. Right. And then once it's good, it's working pretty well and nothing's ever going to be perfect. Right. But then you get somebody else to, to manage it and run that part so that you can keep, you know, inventing. Right. That's our job as entrepreneurs. Right. To invent, to be creative. So let me ask you this question. This is kind of a tough question. I don't know if there's a real answer to it, but you're, you're jumping, you're saying, I'm going to do a service to add on to my, to my software base, right? I'm going to add a service to, for instance, for us, create your webinars for you. Yep. When do you know whether that service is going to be successful in the, like, let's say you're building the systems on the way down. When do you know, okay, this is going to take off. This is going to be successful versus you know, I'm not really getting enough attention or maybe I guess the question is, how do you know if like your marketing angles aren't dialed in or just the receptiveness of the audience isn't really there? Like, where do you make that distinction? That's, that's a great question. I think that in everything that you do, right, just like with hiring somebody, you're giving them a process. I think you need a process, right, to roll out a new offer. Okay. So for us, we do a beta program for everything that we're trying to release, Right. And we never have more than one going at a time because we just can't handle it. Um, you know, the, the definition of insanity is, you know, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. Right. So we only do one at a time. Right. But I'll go head down and I'll work with people on one thing that we're trying to turn into a service. Right. And, and I'll do that for a month. Right. And if I can't get the desired result out of it, then we don't do it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's so, amazing. you know, our mastermind that we have right now that we have running, it's a sales mastermind for lead gen. It all came out of a beta group. Right. And mm -hmm. I went head down super, super deep with a group of like 12 people, 12 entrepreneurs mm -hmm. that were on my list that wanted to get into the lead gen business, wanted to really build a big lead gen business. And I said, if I can take these people from here to here, here's my goal. If I can do that over the course of a month, then and only then will we release it to more people. Right. I'm not going to try to do something unfounded. Right. Um, you know, and, and try to sell it to a couple hundred people, you know, on, on our list if it's not going to work. Right. So yeah. we took the beta, the beta blew up. We got amazing results. Now we know that we have all the hooks and the angles and all the social proof that we need to really sell it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And we had talked earlier, you said with the mastermind, this is before the call started. You said with the mastermind, you know, initially, um, churn was higher than expected. You, you didn't really know the systems yet. So you're kind of learning it. You know, you didn't, I, I think the key thing there is you didn't give up there. Like you yeah. learn from that group to say, okay, well, we got some results. Obviously it wasn't the perfect thing. And we can't expect ever that our first release of anything going to be perfect, right? No, it's no. continual evolution For sure. and um, iterations of everything. But, you know, you, you found the wins in there and then you maximize those and yeah. you find the losses and then you learn to... to that goes out. That exactly. Goes out. So like the, the beta group that we're talking about for the mastermind was only supposed to be four weeks, right? Mm -hmm. But... I had everybody, I had a bunch of people crushing it and I had a bunch of people that were about to crush it, right? And the program's coming to an end. I'm like, this isn't the desired result that I need. I need all of them doing this, right? And so I figured if I can put another two weeks on the program, I didn't sell it for more money, right? I didn't ask for anything more from them. I knew that, if, you know, if we could run it for another two weeks, I knew that I could make them successful, right? And so we did. And, you know, that's what blew up the first round of our mastermind was all the case studies and results from that six week program. So you got to be willing to, to kind of roll with the punches a little bit. Not everything is in an exact science and you're going to have losses and you got to figure out why they're losses. And, you know, how, how do you prevent it from happening next time? 
You know, how do you spot the issue sooner next time? Right. Not even, you know, not everything's preventable. Just how, what, what are the KPIs that you need to be watching to try to catch it as soon as possible? That is um, amazing advice. I think that's absolutely huge. Just like you're allowed to make mistakes and mistakes are going to happen and there's going to be failures and stuff. But as long as you can learn from them, like you said, I think KPIs are such a important thing. Um, you know, for a lot of people, I think you guys are both very analytical driven. I've always yeah. felt that way, but I think KPIs um, for, for a person that's not maybe so analytical driven, it, it's a little bit harder to do, but just having some baseline numbers and knowing what those KPIs are is just such a, it's like rocket fuel to you because you can actually start judging where you are on the spectrum, just learning where you need to be and kind of pushing yourself forward. Um, but and now we do that with our customers too, right? So in the mastermind, it used to take like six weeks to get our customers all set up and everything up and running for them in order for them to sell lead gen. Right, so our first, um, we we have a prize in there for the first person to, uh, to three sales, right, and we give them that cash, right, and it's a big, it's a big, uh, it's a big KPI that we watch internally too. How good of a job are we doing? And traditionally, it took six or seven weeks, right. This time that we just launched, we just launched uh, not yesterday, Tuesday, the Tuesday before, we already have somebody at three sales, right. So it happened in a week when it took right six or seven before. But mm -hmm. the, the reason that we got so good at that is because we're always looking at the numbers. What are the KPIs? How long does it take? How can we get rid of the bottlenecks that are there now and get them to have success as much as possible? That's amazing. That, that's absolutely um, fantastic to hear. I'm going to have to take some notes from that as well and, and really just use uh, the data to kind of push us forward. Uh, and I think that's what every business can do. And it's, it's basically all just data as you go through it. You're just Definitely. learning from from each episode the, but i mean by all means okay. there was there was a sacrifice with that too right what mm -hmm. what we skipped was all the foundation stuff <laughs> right and it was just like jumping right into sales do you did you feel that you had to qualify people differently to do that you no to that i had to be able to show all the crazy results that we've had from the last year and a half or whatever since we've been running the program and just say trust me jump i'll help you build the parachute on the way down here's why Right. And, and here's why we're doing it different. It can take us six or seven weeks to get there or we can do it all together right here, right now. So kind of just showing the cards up front, there's a little bit more risk. We're going to build it on you on the jump. And instead of you getting comfortable and then getting there, in which case a lot of people probably freeze and don't take action yep. it's about taking action fast and yep. learning as you go. Yeah. A lot of people would, you know, go through three or four weeks and be like, all right, I, I don't feel like I'm really making any momentum in my business. I mean, I got a website set up. I got my merchant account set up. I got my LLC. Like I did all this stuff that I know I need to do, but I, I didn't have anybody offering to pay me money or I haven't even talked with a business owner yet about this. How do I know that it's going to work? Right. So in, instead, literally day one, they were having conversations with business owners that were interested in their services. Right. Day two, they're having consults and appointments with them, with people that, again, were, were interested in their services. So mm -hmm. I think it goes back to something again that we were talking to before, which was figuring out where that stick point is or where the, the piece where people need to have, like the action piece, that's the win for people. And I think for whether you're doing software or services or consulting or uh, you know, mass or whatever you're doing, info product, you need to understand like what is the minimum action needed to get the desired result. And for you guys, you figure that out. So, I mean, skipping all the, you know, operational setup, it's just go have conversations, get a check if you need to, like the baseline yeah, yeah. actions needed to get the result, which is just a sale because if they could get a sale and they knew it worked, everything else is easy. Exactly. Uh, so it's one step at a time. Get get the appointment, then I'll teach you, you know, what to do on the appointment, right? Then once you have that, ask for the ask for the sale, right? Ask for the credit card on the phone. Why? Don't send them a proposal, don't send them an outline why because you're going to send out a couple hundred of them and you're not going to really figure out what the rebuttals are, right? Why are they, you know, why are they not signing up? Instead, let's find those out right away, right? Let's figure those out the first day that we're having those appointments so that I can help you get past them. Got it. Makes sense. Makes sense. Well, listen, um, we can keep talking about the story. What I want to hear is from the audience, guys. You guys have been a, a little bit quiet here. So let us know. Uh, first of all, how do you like this content so far? Is there um, any questions? Because right now we're kind of in the questions and answer segment here. Um, so really would love to hear questions from you guys. You have uh, Joe here who can answer questions specifically maybe about his uh, you know, journey or, or either about you know some of the marketing and sales angles that he does. But um, we'd love to hear from you guys. Just go ahead, type into the chat window 
let us know what you think. We're going to be here for about another 30 minutes. So we'd love to, to really just kind of uh, get personal with you guys. What is the product from Yo? I think you meant Joe. <laughs> but yeah, 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 we have multiple. The, the best thing to do, Arnold, is to go check out our blog. It's at uh, digitaltriggers.io. And, um, you know, like, like this Demio Discover webinar is for David, you know, um, uh, Digital Triggers is for me. It's my way to give back to the community. It's my way to give a bunch of value up front with, with, without asking for anything, right? So there's some amazing training there that you guys could probably pay for hundreds or thousands of dollars for a course to get through some of that stuff and to get some of that training. And we just give it away for free. Right, we're constantly pushing that free line. We want to see you guys get some results. Go make some money. You know, fill your pocket, and and then we'll chat. I think Ben just posted the link in there, and cool. Ben is uh, just partner there. I was just I had to look at the screen very closely because Ben's uh, gravatar looks so so uh, official. Funny. It's so official. It looks like an old, an old. It looks like Brunson for a second. There, so. <laughs> um, That's funny. Thanks for joining us, Ben. Uh, let's see some questions here. Um, so curious whether the mastermind is still available. Um, um, no, you guys can- unfortunately not. So um, what, I'll give you guys a little tip and I'll tell you why. Um, if, if you guys run a coaching business that's one to many um, or even just one on one, I would highly recommend that you guys uh, – that, that you guys take people on in spurts, right? Either for a month or two months or three months or a quarter. So right now we're up to four months in our program. Uh, it, it was, you know, six weeks at first, then it was three months. Now it's four months. But basically we all start together. We're all on the same page, doing the same thing at the same time. So it's just not me teaching you guys, right? But they have the community effect as well. So if I answer a question and then somebody else asks the same question the next day, the community can help. Right. Or the community can give feedback. Hey, I got this rebuttal. You know, how should I handle it? And it's not just always me replying. It's the rest of the community. Hey, I got that yesterday and this is what I tried and this is what worked for me. Right. Uh, And um, the, the other thing is, is it just really helps with consumption. If you drip it out like that and you have everybody start at the same place, right, all on day one, doing the same thing together, people consume it much better. Right. They don't log in and see a, you know, 16 weeks of content and then get stunned and not do anything. So unfortunately, yeah. no, the, the program isn't available for anybody doing coaching. And I see Juanita is, um, you know, definitely consider that. That's really, really worked for us. Um, it, it's, it's not the most fun as the, as the coach or the product creator, um, but it really, really helps for consumption. Um, and consumption equals success, and success is what's going to sell your program. So I, exactly. I don't think you have an option but to really do it that way. Mm-hmm. I think for Juanita, it's the same thing. It's also having the knowledge of like in my program, where is the result? Where is the quickest route to action? Yep. Um, I've talked with Juanita. I know her program. So um, I think differentiation in the coaching space is extremely difficult um, just because there's, it's a very competitive space. There's a lot of, a lot of noise in that space. So you really got to also um, be attentive to being very specific. I mean, there's being niched down and then there's specific results and then there's the differentiation and, and, and the quick, um, methods to those results. I mean, what kind of advice would you give, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joe, uh, I, this- I think get really, really specific Juanita on who your perfect customer is. If you're just starting, that's going to be a little bit hard because you don't know yet, probably. But I would I would recommend honing that down as fast as possible. If you're already doing well with it, right, in the coaching business or it's already started up, look at who your current customers are, who you like working with, who you don't, and create that ideal avatar, right? And then go deep with them. And what, what are um, all of their problems, right? And what you're going to find is when you get very, very specific about the type of person that you're wanting to work with is that 90% of them have the exact same issues, right? Mm-hmm. Help them get past those issues. And that's honestly the results that you need to sell your program. That's beautiful. That's so, perfect. I mean, you- if I were you, I would do like some type of beta, <laughs> right? Uh, for four weeks, six weeks, something, Okay. Ask for a lot of money and, and, and also not just ask for a lot of money, but make your, make your requirements to be involved crazy, right? Because you need them to do it. You need them to be successful because otherwise your beta was pointless, 
right? So for mm -hmm. us, for our beta, it was like, it's a thousand bucks. I need you working the system every day, Monday through Friday. If I don't get a check-in from you one day, you're gone, right? Like I was, I was like crazy about the terms. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why it works so well. Right, because I had the commitment, I had people focused and, and they did it and they did it well, right? So solve their problems and then use that to really launch Juanita, your coaching program. That would be my suggestion. That's uh, that's really amazing help. Uh, I think that that's really smart to, to, to weed, out, um, weed out the people that aren't the right fit at that time and really focus on action takers. And I heard this once before, um, whenever you're going through like a beta period or an alpha period or anything like that to learn about a program, you want people that are that already have momentum initially for these programs. Because what you need to do is you need people that can already get that already have wheels moving. You just want to help them get results faster or get to your specific results. But it's going to take you a lot longer to figure out if the program is going to work, if what you're doing is working, because they don't have that momentum yet. And a lot of times people will struggle just getting started. Right. So you want to have some of that momentum already going. Oh, but I, think that's really awesome. I took the opposite approach. <laughs> I made it hard. Uh, I love that advice, though. That's so perfect. Um, but yeah. I just remember when we did the beta, like there were there were no like quote unquote successful people already in there. I mean, there were you know start from scratch newbies essentially. Um, and uh, and and honestly, guys, that's probably why you know our program does so well is because we're able to take a newbie and get them going and getting momentum fast, right? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, the easy way would be to find somebody that has some momentum that you know that you can really help scale and get past some some major issues very quickly, right? Then that you can use to to sell your program. That's awesome. And I, I, one one of the big takeaways from our last launch was, um, you know, everybody always says like testimonials sell, right? And testimonials are important. Um, but at some point, when you're selling stuff and you're the face, um, people don't really aspire to be you anymore. Right? They aspire to be one of your students, right? Because you're too far off, right? What you do, right? They, they think is too far off, right? So let's say that you make seven figures. Their goal is to make six figures. It just doesn't compute for them. They haven't walked a mile in your shoe yet. They don't get it. They haven't had one sale yet, right? So um, never underestimate the power of a good testimonial. Uh, on our last campaign, we had like a, a pitch perfect uh, testimonial. Right. Uh, of exactly if I could write out like storyboard what I want a testimonial for our program to be, it was exactly that. Right. Um, and uh, honestly, guys, that testimonial probably br helped us bring in about 25 percent of our sales. Wow. Right. Like just and, and I've never had that before. We've always had lots of testimonials and social proof, but I never had something that struck people right that well. And people literally some people got off the webinar because they were crying and came back like once they got composure, right? And then bought and said, the reason I bought was because of that video. Can we, uh, can we go into that a little bit more in depth? Did you guys, did you guys have like a formula that you wanted for this testimonial? We, we did that... if, if we could write it out though, it'd be like exactly what we wanted. And so no, he, he, told, he told the exact story of our ideal customer, mm -hmm. right? The same hiccups, the same problems, right? trying this, trying that. It didn't work. Nothing's worked. He's, you know, done all these different things, calling out our competitors and basically saying that it didn't work, right? Joining yeah. our program, right? Investing a boatload of money. Then he didn't do anything with it, right? Literally week one of picking up the program brought on two customers for 3000 bucks a month, right? Wow. And now he's at 10,000 a month recurring. Right. Um, you know, like that, that it just hit, all, you know, all, all of the pain points that our customers had. Mm -hmm. That's really amazing. I mean, um, having those type of case studies, they, they will just blow through so much objections. Uh, they tell the story. It's really powerful. Um, I'd love to hear that. So you guys didn't do any, any, um, I guess, what did you guys do? Put that into your webinar itself at a certain point? Like where, where do you actually use these powerful yeah. testimonials when you find the best way to do it? Yeah. So we found that there were um, this, this time through when we re released the, the mastermind, right? We go for four months now uh, and then we take a month break and then we reopen. So this time through, we wanted to really hit on two points. And the one was that testimonial and another one was another testimonial video. And so throughout the webinar, when we did that, yeah, we played, we played the, the video and to me, it felt a little, little awkward 
going from you know a, a webinar and interacting with everybody to hang on guys, I want to show you this video, right? Uh, mm-hmm. but, it, but it worked so so well um, be, because your customers will sell uh, better than you can because they're in relatable shoes to uh, to everybody else, right? If it's yep. if it's really matching those ideal customer profiles. I think um, as soon as you start talking on a webinar, you, you kind of have a little bit of differentiation from your target customer base because all of a sudden you're the leader and you may be, you know, there's that objection in people's mind. They don't know, I'm not being sold to, what's happening here kind of thing. But when you're hearing a story from someone else, it kind of breaks that barrier and, and it allows that sales process to happen through someone else's voice. So it's always so, so powerful there. Um, but that's awesome. So, I, I saw Paul's question here. Curious if you'll be doing any new beta launches in the new future. Yeah, man, <laughs> constantly. Um, we, we do them about probably every quarter, realistically, um, with, with something that we're working on internally. Um, some of them kind of go to the public. Some of them don't. Some of them just go to our mastermind members. Um, you know, we, we have different audiences that we have used each of them. Uh, Paul, uh, where, where can you get on your list? Where can people get on your list to, to find out more about those beta launches? Yeah, yeah, digitaltriggers.io. Awesome. Digital triggers. Guys, there's a lot of great content on that site too, so definitely go check it out. Um, and as you can see, Joe, uh, the, the testimonial worked without even being played. You're just talking about it. Got people to sign up. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, any, any questions? I want to see some questions in here, guys. Um, been Everyone's been kind of quiet today, so... What, what things are you struggling with in your business that we can help with? How can we uh, give you guys some great value here? We're talking a lot about, obviously, um, you know, different ways to market and put angles on products or softwares, get deep with your customers, um, you know, validate some of those things with your customers. How can we help you guys? Please uh, give us some questions. In the meantime, Joe, as we wait for that, what would you say has been kind of a big the biggest shift, I guess, in the past year that you've, you've hit on for marketing or sales that you found that um, have been one of the biggest, I guess, growth engines for you the, in the past year? The biggest like types of promotions or angles or what do you mean? I would say angles that you've used. Okay. In, like the past. You know. So one of the angles that we, we've used really well, you guys have to be careful with, but it works very well, um, mm-hmm. is... Uh, we did this with with a piece of a piece of software called Sinwire. So the the po- the purpose of Sinwire, I can't even talk the poipus. The purpose of Sinwire is it's a it's a one place that you go post social media content and it goes and it posts it all over, right? Uh, it posts on Blogger, it posts on all these different WordPress sites, social media sites, Web 2.0s, things like that. And so our competitor was uh, our main competitor to that is OnlyWire. Right. Um, and it's done for SEO purposes. That's why we built the tool. Can it be used for other things? But that's yes, but that's not why we do it. So with that, the, the, the big thing is we're going up against a monster in the space. Right. I mean, it's like you guys going up against go to webinar. Right. And so <laughs> what company? Right. And so it was like, how, how do we get how do we get that household name status was the question I kept asking myself. Mm-hmm. Right. Or that branding while we're the little boy in the market, right? How do we do that? And so um, what we did is, uh, is, is we slashed our prices for the first X amount of customers. And we flooded the gates with customers. And everywhere that you looked in the SEO community, people were talking about Sinwire. And now nobody's talking about OnlyWire. And so, right, we helped change the conversation by just simply onboarding a whole lot of customers and based on the angle of a way better price point, right? What you could be paying per month is what you'll pay per year, right? And now, all, now, now we could charge basically whatever we wanted. Why? Because we had that branding and we were a household name. Does that make sense? So it definitely makes sense. It definitely makes sense. So you started with the goal, which was we want to get more marketplace awareness. Yep. Or like that was kind of the mission of the campaign. Yep. Looked at pricing as the method to do that. So kind of undercut pricing so that you become a prominent um, name there for people. Now, 
with pricing, were you looking at your customers? Like, do I know if my customer's base is going to pay this? This is a complaint maybe that they have. Yeah, yeah. The pricing is so, a big complaint. Yeah, yeah. So for example, with OnlyWire, if you were just using them at that time when we launched, they've now changed their pricing to try to combat our angle. <laughs> uh, but if you looked at their pricing at that time, it was um, if you were just using it and you were just really getting started, it was 99 bucks. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if you uh, 99 bucks a month, if you were doing a little more, had probably two or three customers, it was one hundred and ninety nine. OK. And if you had like a full blown agency doing it for 10, 15 plus customers, right, it was going to cost you about five hundred bucks a month. OK, mm -hmm. so we said, where do we need our pricing to be in order for us to just blow everybody out of the water and for nobody to have any questions about signing up? Right, like because that was the entire goal. What do we do from a branding or from an offer perspective, just to land five hundred or a thousand customers like fast, and not customers for you know ten dollars, right? Like it needed to be somebody that we want to stick in the program. So it still it needed to make sense, but not a ten dollar product. And so what we went with was one hundred ninety nine bucks a year or two hundred ninety nine bucks lifetime. And we crushed wow. it, 30, 40% conversion rates on webinars. Um, and very, very quickly build a customer base of 1,000 people where everybody, you know, we're everywhere online talking about SEO. Now people are talking about the product. That's amazing. So you used uh, webinars as your distribution model, yeah. it's your sales model. Um, we have a, by the way, we have a question here from Jim. He asked if your uh, pay per call product want to see if auto webinars would be a good way to get new clients. Do you guys use auto webinars along with webinars as distribution or you mostly do live? Um, we don't, for our client services business, we don't use webinars. So here's the thing, like our target profile gym in our pay per call stuff that we do and our lead gen stuff that we do is, um, excuse me, is, uh, is not like white collar businesses. This is blue collar. Why? Because we can get in fast and we can close a deal fast. Right. It's going to be hard for me to get a hold of a plastic surgeon and pitch him really quickly. Right. They have people to, to head you off. Right. But if I go after a roofer, a niche that we do really, really well in uh, or like HVAC, air conditioning and heating companies, I can get to the decision maker in about two minutes on the phone. Wow. Over and over and over and over. And I can pitch and I can close same day. Right. So um, I personally, with all the paper call stuff that we do, we go after blue collar stuff and we go after niches that people are making buying decisions fast. OK, what do I mean by that? They have a problem. They need it solved right away. I have a leak in my roof. I call a roofer. Right. Uh, my AC is not working. It's you know hot as hell here in South Florida. I'm going to call somebody to come right away to fix my AC repair. There's not a whole lot of uh, of sales really to do that. Right. It's just about getting in front of the customer's eyeballs. So um, if you were selling digital marketing services to other niches, would I think it would work and would would a webinar be good? Yes. Right. But if you're in this market, the blue collar niches and you're selling something like paper call, I don't think that um, that webinars is the best route. Right. Could you use it as a, as like a follow up tool to people that you didn't close to help build more rapport? So they see you on the screen. Right. And you help build value. Yes. Right. But I don't think it's the best first initial approach personally. Right. So um, yeah. we had a guy yesterday in an hour and a half set 10 appointments. Right. 10 appointments with business owners in a niche for pay per call. Right. Like yeah. that. That's the fastest method. Right. Is getting on the phone. So um, I don't think it's the best initial approach, Jim, but I think it's a good long term uh, approach for following up, up with people that you don't initially close. Right. Like putting it in your long term follow up sequence, essentially. So direct sales and sometimes um, the unscalable the unscalable methods are sometimes the best, especially early on, because your time is the only thing that you can really exactly. leverage the most. Of. Exactly. Especially if you're going through Jim creating an automated webinar, it might take you two weeks to set everything up, and instead of you know focusing on sales and, and getting revenue in, you're focusing on like a scalable system where you don't really have sales coming in yet. And you don't even really have proof of concept yet. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, I mean, you know, why, why are you guys doing all the demos that you do every day? I mean, I'm sure that especially when you started, there were things that you'd rather do. Now you guys probably love it um, because you understand how important it is. Um, but there's nothing there's nothing better than just going straight for the sale, man.
what's the easiest, fastest approach to get it done? And don't reinvent the wheel until you understand your customer base, uh, I think is super mm -hmm. important. Understood. Understood. Um, Lydia and Dave say, what sectors do you suggest working in and how do you feel about restaurants? I think um, I can answer this from my point of view, but I think it would be more important that you think about it in the grand scheme of things and your point of view versus just mine. For me, restaurants doesn't make sense. Um, so if, if you built a piece of software, Lydia, that helped restaurants transform a specific business process or do something amazing for them, right, then, then go for it. My product or service uh, doesn't do as well with restaurants, right? I can do a lot better elsewhere. Um, so I think you have to think about the product market fit. Um, and it's either a fit or it's not. Um, and I think that that's super important. If you don't know who your customer is, like people talk about this all the time, but uh, I think a lot of people just like, yeah, that's great. I understand. Like, no, it's super important. If you're talking to the wrong market, uh, you're treading water. If you're talking around, uh, if you're talking to the right, the right product, uh, or if you're talking to the right market and you have the right product market fit, anything that you sell should be on fire right now and like selling like crazy. Makes sense. Makes sense. And sometimes it's figuring out the, the, the market fit. Sometimes it's figuring out the product. And I think some, sometimes you have to be patient on both of those. For all of you guys, you have to be patient on both of those. Know that you know, just by figuring out more about your customer base, you're going to figure out more that needs to go into your product. And the more you build in the product, the more you'll, you'll kind of see there's more things to build for the, for the yeah. target base. So you're always going to be you know, balancing both of these and growing those. Um, it's, it's part of business. It's not going to end. It's just, it's just growing and growing. And then you'll get to the point where you do what uh, Joe does and start getting new offers and angles and different businesses, uh, set up to the same client base. So I think that that's really amazing. But, um, and I think that's the key from going from, you know, from seven figures to multiple seven figures or like getting to the next level is ultimately selling more products to that same customer base. Right, because you don't have to go reinvent the wheel. You don't have to bang your head against the wall for six months or three months or twelve months or whatever it took to get that initial traction and for things to start making sense finally. Right, you you get to leapfrog all of that and go straight to all right. What's the angle and you know make it, making some revenue from it. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Well, guys, we're going to be wrapping up here. So. While you're here, make sure you ask any last questions. Arnold asked if your program works in all different countries, um, but we, we will be stopping here in just a couple of minutes. So make sure you get your last questions in here, guys. I just want to thank you all you know, for your time today, uh, spending an hour with us here on the Demio Discover Show. I want to thank you, Joe, for, for coming out as we wait for these last questions. Really, really appreciate your time, man. Just listening to you. I mean, I learned a hell of a lot today just listening to you kind of talk about what you guys are doing but um really appreciate you man really appreciate all your time definitely definitely ha happy to help man i was hoping to get on here sooner but we had that launch so uh glad you waited for me glad we were able to jump on hang out hopefully provide a bunch yeah. of value to uh to all of your subscribers and uh everybody that i brought along too yeah absolutely we'll begin guys for anyone that this is the first time on the call we put all of these replays up on the demio blog it's demio.com forward slash inside so we'll send out an email as well to everyone but uh, make sure you guys go check out uh, the replay we have uh, all every week's replay and you guys will get notified for the next uh, upcoming week's calls every week we host these live um so you guys can come learn from from experts but joe um Really, really appreciate your time. If Ben's still on the call, thanks for jumping on too, Ben. Um, always a pleasure to, to hang out with you guys. Yeah, man, for sure. Don't be a stranger. All right, <laughs> <laughs> All right everybody. Thanks so much for your time. And uh, if you have any other questions, je definitely check out um, digitaltriggers.io. It's their blog. Uh, when I end this webinar, you guys will all be redirected to a page and uh, you'll get access to that as well. See you guys soon. All right. See you guys.